video on how we recognize pathogens. So what we use are what are called molecular sensors, like what's right here, which is the toll-like receptor. Toll-like receptor, otherwise known as TLR, which I'll refer to it as that in further videos. Um, and we also have nod-like receptors, so I'll put that right here. Nod-like receptors. Receptors. Okay, that's bad. Hold on. Recept. That is a P. Otherwise known as NLRs. And what they are is they're on innate immune cells and they span the entire membrane of uh, what are called pattern recognition receptors. So these are both pattern recognition receptors. PRRs, pattern recognition receptors. Um, and they recognize what are called structural motifs or pathogen associated molecular patterns, which we will write as PAMPs. So they recognize pathogen associated molecular patterns or, or damage associated molecular patterns. Damage associated molecular patterns. Okay, um, so these pathogen associated molecular patterns would be on something like a little bacteria. So this bacteria right here, this little bacteria cell, you know, gross, he would have um, highly conserved and usually necessary for their survival different associated molecular patterns like on their cell surface, lipopolysaccharide for example, peptidoglycan for example. Um, so what this pathogen recognition receptor would do is activate innate and inflammatory responses to respond to this bacteria cell being inside you. You don't know how many more there are. If you just found one, there might be more hanging around the corner. Now, what about damage associated molecular patterns? Um, these are something like heat shock proteins that are not expressed on healthy cells. So those trigger toll-like receptors and nod-like receptors to cause the clearance of the dead, dying, and aging cells by macrophage mediated endocytosis. So this Pac-Man is killing all the dead cells. Um, what toll-like receptors can do is detect a variety of PAMPs as well as DAMPs when they bind their leucine-rich repeat domains, which is right here, leucine-rich repeat domains. I'll try and get this in white, I guess, right here. So these are the leucine-rich domains leucine rich repeat domains, LLRs. Um, so they make up the extracellular ligand binding structure right here. Um, so the ligand binding induces toll-like receptor dimerization and signal transduction. So what will happen, what I haven't drawn yet on this, is there will be another cell, or another receptor, sorry, right here. So I'll try and draw this fairly quickly. We have another one here, with the same same stuff going on. And then you have our leucine rich domain. So they kind of form a, oops, this is not the right color. They kind of form a loop like this around each other. I just wanted to show you what a single one looked like. So this is your, your dimerized uh, uh, cell. And then this causes signal transduction. These actually also connect with each other too down here in the TIR domain. So they um, induce the dimerization and signal transduction, but they do not promote phagocytosis. Nod-like receptors, on the other hand, are act activated by extracellular PAMPs and DAMPs, and they are associated with C-type lectin receptors, or CLRs, which bind carbohydrates in the surface of pathogens and do promote phagocytosis. They also associate with retino retinoic acid-inducible gene-like receptors, or RLRs, which bind viral RNAs and additional important pathogen recognition receptors. Pathogen recognition receptors are found on myeloid cells, lymphocyte subsets, and other cell types that are commonly exposed to pathogens such as skin, mucosal, epithelial cells, endothelial cells, and fibroblasts. So these leucine-rich domains here comprise the horseshoe-shaped extracellular and endosomal binding domain for the TLR ligands. So this is where 
something will bind to right here. And then the TIR domain, which stands for toll interleukin-1 receptor domain, which interacts with the adapter molecules. So the adapter molecules I'm going to talk about in my next video, how everything will adapt and how a signaling cascade will come after the dimerization of these molecules.